What's your name? <laughs> Young. Yes. Young. I feel like it's Thomas or something. <laughs> You're the MILF hunter, dude. The biggest one would be Addison's mom. I literally was like, you know what? I want to date to the VMAs. Also, her husband has been trying to like piss me off. If I could bring his wife to this, it'd be kind of tight. <laughs> to say Jesus and God isn't real. How about I install a microchip into your head so you get more educated, you brain dead steroid abusing mother <laughs> What Elon said right there was facts, bro. Like, I'm back. <laughs>I don't know I, we always do this thing where that we talk we talk in the beginning and then like i just feel like no one wants to hear what we have to say they oh yeah we just it. did one too they just wait for the guests like he's already here i'm you, not gonna make him get up you think he got enough gravy to just sit there and i just think so i think so talk? guys welcome back to impulsive look we're the number one podcast in the world why would i make that up statistical if you are not subscribed hit that subscribe button uh, we, we produce an episode every single week to hopefully help you pass the time and maybe even in pass rare out. circumstances pass out. Yeah. Learn something while you're passed out. Mm -hmm. uh, Mikey, you look like a guy I would see in an alleyway. Thank you. Something about beanies Thank you. on you make you look like you're about to commit a crime. I am. Hell yeah. I am about to commit a crime. Look at this man on my shirt, bro, from American Psycho. He, 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 he committed a lot of crimes. But crime is bad. And by the way, drink crime. I mean, prime. <laughs> As a rapper, I'm going to say that wasn't that smooth, but you can't. <laughs> there's, some, no. there's some under meaning to that one, bro. The, it's, the motherfucker's getting creative in the comments. He's I, getting I, I respect. I respect the creativity. You guys are good. You, guys you, are you good. had enough You had enough charisma with it for me to, to believe it. You know, he sold it. He sold it. I appreciate sold that. It. So look, sold Gravy, it. Gravy, I got an intro for you. Okay. Um, sometimes they're good. Sometimes they're bad. Dylan writes them. Why don't you soften them up with a shot before you do it? Yeah. Right. May soften we, his right. ass we do up. This? I do actually have shots here for us. What about me? There we go. Uh, okay. I'll give you a shot of... Uh, prime? Yeah, prime. Prime energy. As, as you guys know, Mikey uh, did drugs for 10 years. He wrote an entire book about it and doesn't drink. Andy's, doesn't drink Andy, anymore. Andy's doing 75 hard, so he has two reasons not to drink. Yeah, yeah. Ooh. I, I saw this man on uh, New Year's, and he was the soberest cat in the room. For sure. Here we go. Cheers, hey, cheers. all. To a great episode. Oh, that's fizz. Wow. Fizz not the top half. Pretty. Let's go. Let's see what this does. Mm. <laughs> mm. Wow. You know that's my first time trying Prime Energy? Really? By the way? I gave you strawberry watermelon. It's, it's, it's great. It's my personal favorite. And I would never, obviously... Suck your dick and just say something that made not. you appear great. It right. actually is really good. Oh, thanks, bro. Let me step out of the same one. I want to try it. I want to show that bomb with y'all. <laughs> because intentionally, let me sip out of the same one. Yeah, that shit tastes pretty good. Thanks, bro. And uh, 10 calories, zero sugar. Keep your wired all day. Well, not all day, but it is very good, clean, healthy energy. I don't have a crash. I, lo I love our product. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm biased. I'll let you know about the crash. It's, I'm not saying that yet. As like of right better, now, it just tastes good. It's like a better yeah, it's, it's it, yep. It's a better so, for you, better tasting. I've been ripping for a while, so I I, I need oh we need gotta, some prime. We gotta switch you up. Dog. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you I don't even know if you could say it that on the show. We might we might have even believed that out. Holy shit! I just got the craziest message ever. I was tapped on my shoulder. I would. <laughs> Thank you so much to Resorts World. Yeah, I just spit so much. It was all <laughs> prime. <laughs> Thank you so much to Resorts World and to Jalisco. Jalisco, 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 Jalisco uh, for having us for the impulsive tapings, uh, Resorts World, you know, your number one location in Las Vegas for fun. I, I don't know. That was good. Dude. I think I think we checked that box. Yeah. All right. I'll yeah. do the intro now. You ready? It's a world full of resorts, man. This is gorgeous. <laughs> well put. <laughs> <laughs> Our guest today is sitting right there. He's the Mac Daddy of MILFs who has impacted pop culture in a very little time as a musician. He's known for his hits, Betty, Gravy Train, and <laughs> Mr. Clean, many more. But with him, his career extends way beyond his music because he's fucking awesome. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Young Gravy. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, baby. It, Thank you, baby. Dude, your voice is is... It sounds like a delicious meal. Regal. Like I can I can taste your the way your voice sounds. It's, it's regal. 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 That's, that's, hot, that's the word. regal. Oh, that's the word that. I would I use. That, man. Regal it's Beagle would be the nickname I would use to describe it. When I when I first met you and even first saw you, my initial thought was that you were born in the 50s yeah. and you currently exist in the <laughs> mid 70s yeah. and you have a shag carpet in your house. And you smell of rich mahogany. Yeah, baby. Yeah, yeah. That's my. my honestly, I'm, I'm buying. A, I'm buying a crib right now in LA. Hopefully, somewhere close to 
the donut, bro, the donut one that we were talking about, it's it got. Got, Anyways, got no, no, you can say it. no. It's got fine. Bought. People, people. Oh, it did it. It's I was old. trying to move into his neighborhood potentially, and and uh, that crib got bought. But uh, it's a sick neighbor. I wanted you in there, bro. Yeah, man. When, when I'm looking at these cribs, like I love the like more '70s looking stuff, like like the crazy like mid-century modern. Mm -hmm. like, like, that's that is my swag. I not, just. It, it's not like a, a gimmick or some shit that I just do for, for the music. I was I was I gonna it. ask because that was the first thing I noticed as well. Like when you think of musicians, right? You hear you hear their music, and then you find out who this person is. And when I f first found out who Young Gravy was, it, like you had been plucked from a couple generations back. But that's that's just who you are. That's your taste. That's your style. That's you got leopard print pants, nice jacket, you're looking mm -hmm. amazing, bro. And that's just Thank who you, you. are, huh? Yeah, man. I mean, I mean, I wasn't like I was in high school wearing this. You know, I was like a skater boy. I was, you know, I went through phases, but this is what I really like would want to wear. You know, and and the type of music I want to make, and it's what I listen to. You know, it's mm. it's, it's the freshest to me. So it's not a gimmick. We yeah. we got the I got the blessing, the opportunity to spend New Year's with you. Um, yeah, you kind of are like I should just say this right now, like a better looking Logan Paul. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, no agree. offense, but like oh, yeah. a little softer, a little wavier, a little flowier. You, you guys got the same vibe, and you left me for New Year's, and you did your own thing. And Gravy was gracious enough to 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 bless me with his presence, and we had a wonderful night together. We went out with Jeff Wittick. We had dinner. Um, we we went out on the town. We had some fun, and then we hung back out at my house until eight in the morning bright and early this man makes an amazing breakfast I oh i know yeah. yeah he he had uh when he was addicted to drugs for you know that decade <laughs> he he mastered the, the snacks the late night late night snacks and breakfast but but which breakfast specifically what the cinnamon toast crunch no 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 what it's a it's a i would i always made it i made it mykonos every night everyone knew i was gonna make oh 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 um uh completely forgot okay what what sandwich did i make you Oh, it made me a little. It was like uh, English muffin, yeah, with a little bit of egg on that <laughs> on that fool. A little bit of bacon, bacon yeah. a little bit of cheese. Bacon, egg, and cheese. That's my thing, bro. Bacon, egg, and sneeze. But when we were Beautiful. hanging out, you asked me to play a song, and I'm like, okay, what song would Young Gravy play to set the mood? I'm thinking like, is it gonna be Skinner? Is it gonna be like just to clarify, like the mood for you two guys hanging out? No, nah, like, there was there was like, people that were hanging out. It was like a vibe. It was like a, like a kind function. of like a function. Uh -huh. And he he put on some like <laughs> he put on some like West Coast trap type shit, right? Oh. Like, what was the song you asked me to play? Oh, I know what it was. Uh, can y'all play it in the episode too? Probably yeah. not. No, but you could just say it. It's called, it's called uh, the Tip Out by All Black. That, yes, that's bro. How it goes all <laughs> yes, day. and I was like. This man's not faking it, bro. Like this is really in him. Like that's the type of shit you like to listen to, yeah. I mean, I have I have a very wide range, man. I will I will throw on some Dean Martin sometimes. You know, I was just like feeling the feeling the energy of the room. I was like, I can't play like some Earth, Wind, and Fire right now. I think I need to play some trap, like turn up <laughs> turn up activity. So so yeah, man, that song is beautiful. When did you take your like love for whatever genre of music it was and turn it into a craft that you started to want to get involved in when you start spitting, creating? Man, I uh, I was in college at University of Wisconsin. Y'all ever been there? Madison? No but, no, but I know about Wisconsin. I know about the cheese. That's about it? Yeah. <laughs> Y'all, y'all heard of the Badgers? The yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, for sure. Big, biggest party. Y'all throw school. down over there. It's the biggest yeah, party school sure. in America, for sure. And it's, uh, I had a great time there, man. I was there for like three years. I was uh, running a few businesses, starting little companies by myself or with my roommates, and then I was like, I had a moment where I, I saw some rappers blow up, and I said, you know what? Like, I need to just, I need to bring this sound that I love into hip hop. Mm. So, so that's when I started making music and I was like, I can do this because SoundCloud was like the thing at that point. Did, did your friends tell you or, or did you even know that you were gifted vocally? Like, bro, your voice is special. No, I really didn't for a while. You didn't even c c consider it. It honestly was <laughs> like, <laughs> it honestly, it, it's crazy because, you know, you, you always hear your own voice and you hate it. So, yeah. so there, I honestly want to say that I was rapping for like a year and a half. And I thought that my voice sucked, but I was like, oh, well, the lyrics are kind of going to like, you know, push me, push me through. And then when I dropped the video for Mr. Clean, which was, which is, yeah, a year and a half after I started rapping, no one had seen my face. I had, I had hidden my appearance the whole time and I dropped this song and everyone was like, oh my God, I thought he was black. He sounds like, <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. like yeah, he, yeah. he sounds like Barry White. His voice is so smooth. 
And that's kind of what like made the video really pop off just because how many people were like freaking out about that. I feel like it's part of your intrigue. Like even with even with girls, I I am sort of correct me if I'm wrong, but I sort of think girls are attracted to you just because how unique you are. You're just a unique human being. You're seven feet tall. You Thank got you. these long wavy hair. Again, nice leopard pants. It's like he's in the movie Anchorman. I've never seen anything all like the you, time. Gravy. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> yeah. dude, like, like I, I half expect like brick to walk out at yeah. any moment. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, I think that's a lesson for like. Or that's what I always preach. Like when people ask me about like success with music and how to like differentiate yourself is like create a brand, man. Totally. Be, be different. Be be original. And you you see artists come out like. I don't know. It's it's once in a blue moon when you see someone that's mad unique come out. You know, like you had Lil Peep, XXX. Uh, when I does mean, it go south? Because 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 not now now you I, like Lil Pump comes to mind. No offense, Pump. Oh man. But where where you at? Where you at? Because I I feel like there was a wave of artists who went so far down that unique path, not because it was like who they are. Like when you, you seem very authentic to this, yeah. to this brand you've built, but like a lot of, a lot of people would just dye their hair blue, get, get the teeth grills tatted all over the body. Next thing you know, you're an Island boy. <laughs> see, see, that, that, that's the exact opposite of what, what people need to do. That, that's what another thing I preach is like, don't copy what everyone else is doing. Mm. Don't try to become, don't make some Playboy Cardi style music. Don't go and shout like, out Playboy Cardi, by the way. I love Playboy Cardi. Yeah, sure. he, he he didn't pioneer, but helped pioneer that sound yep. and make it popular. And so many people copy him. And Facts. then and then you got like Lil Pump, Smoke Perp. Like these artists, they're, they're they're not creating something completely original. It's like they're they're making, uh, you know, they're they're taking out ideas that have been out there and making them their own. And and man, Lil Pump has some fire ass music, bro. Yeah, for but, sure, for sure. But he is not. He is not like. You know, doing something completely different, like like a little peep with the whole brand, the music, everything. Yeah. You hear a little peep song within ten seconds, you know that it's him. Yeah, game changer. You hear a young gravy song, you know it's me on site. Mm. It's like that. that that's <laughs> what I think is 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 important, and people succeed without that. But that to me, that's that's what I think is why I succeeded. Hey, listen to me. Do you want a better sex life in 2023? Up to 50% of men have symptoms that get in the way of wanting or enjoying sex, but Roman is here to help. Roman is the digital health clinic for men. Roman addresses a variety of sexual health needs and solutions for men like swipes, which we know very well about on this show. Roman offers discreet wipes to help you last four times longer in bed with no prescription needed. ED. Roman offers prescription medication that helps achieve and maintain a stronger erection and testosterone testing and treatment. Treating low tests can help revive your sex drive. Mike's probably got a fresh round of tea for 2023. And better yet, with Roman, everything's online. No waiting rooms or trips to the pharmacy. If medication is appropriate, Roman will send it directly to your door, and everything arrives in discreet packaging with free two-day shipping. To learn more about how you can achieve your personal sexual health goals, use my link in the description or go to row.co slash Logan today to get 20% off your entire first order. That's row.co slash Logan for 20% off your order. Link in the description. Now back to the show. Did you have... An inspiration for you trying to find out who you were and your brand in music. Like, did you look up to? I know you beat you and BB No Money made waves at the same time and collabed and grew up together and yeah. amplified each other. Was that an inspo for you? Yeah, man. I mean, I mean, I one of the biggest inspirations that I saw was was actually Lil Yachty because mm. a good friend of mine from Atlanta went to middle school with him and. He hit me up one day. He was like, "Yo, check out this." Like, like I had interest in rapping, but I was like, "Oh, there's no way I'm gonna come up from Minnesota. There aren't no, there are no, <laughs> no big rappers out here." And they sent me a, a Lil Yachty song. It was one night. It had sixty thousand plays on SoundCloud. It wasn't anywhere else. And I was like, "Man, this shit is crazy. This is fire. I bet it'll pop off." And then I just watched it like blow up and watch his trajectory. Mm. And the same thing happened with Lil Peep. So I saw them two do it, and I thought, you know what, like. I can make this happen. It's funny how that peer motivation can get you there. I had the same thing with Vine. I had I saw kids my age doing funny videos just like I was doing, getting famous. I'd see their videos more than once. I realized, oh, the, oh they're doing this. That's what they do. Mm -hmm. And it motivated me to then start creating. It sounds like you had the same experience. Yeah, man. And 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 you mentioned Baby No Money. He he and I met so early on. It was like right when I started. Mm -hmm. I had like a hundred followers on SoundCloud, which is like what a like if you make a SoundCloud account 
and your friends add you, you could maybe have a hundred followers. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, I, like he, and I think he had like 200 something and we just like bonded from the start and we started like working on shit together. I, I heard he sent me the song that, that y'all did together, oh, no, bro. bro. No, I just, you got a snap, bro. I, I listened to this song the other day. Cause we, he sent me, he sent me a track. He was like, Hey, do you want to hop on this? It's the pandemic. I'm bored. And I, and I did. And like, dude, I'm just not a musician, man. Like, but you kind of hit it, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I want to pull that out, man. I actually, I actually have it right here. If you want to listen to it. <laughs> yeah. You kind of hit it, man. I was like, all right, Logan, I see you. Oh, here we go. I, I, I dude, I listened to this song f seven days ago. I, was he going to be pissed? This, surely this song is not out. So surely like. Oh, he Just won't play. Don't play. Let me play, 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 play my part. Player part. Because BB No Money snapped, and then he asked me to to do it, and so I put on auto tune. He, he won't care if you play his if you play his part either. It's, it's long. He's, he's a real one. He's a real one. Just play. Play like the end of his part. Okay. Bro, it's hard. It's hard. I mean, he's good though. Trying to get busy, I'm trying to get rich. Rich, 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 I don't know, bro. Oh, I don't know, bro. No, yeah. man. No, man. You hit it. Bro. It just also reminds me of all the other music that you did. Oh, that sounds like a uh, XXX beat. That's all, that. That was the hardest that I've heard you spit. I mean, I haven't. I'll be honest. I haven't listened to a lot of the music you put out, but that was. I, I, I wouldn't I, I, one up. Thanks, bro. First of thanks, but second of I wouldn't call. I mean, I technically it's music, but like it's more. It's it's comedy. It's it's. I'm based in comedy, which is actually why. I think me and BB No Money are tight and like started our dialogue and, and why I was drawn to you two because I saw just the fucking fun you guys were having. You're, you're goofballs. Yeah, no matter how man. you slice it, you're goofballs. And, 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 yeah. and the, but the, the music, the product was great. It, it, it works out that way, man. It's like, it's like we, we're just like having a good time, but like we also have some musical talent and we get in the studio and make all this crazy shit and then we do these tours together and like do all kinds of crazy little things like like these q and a's that get really wild pizza parties all this stuff that like in our set is just got mad unique shit to it it's kind of like um i don't know man people see people see that and and they become cult fans for sure you guys yeah, have yeah. that how do you transition from like having fun and just like doing like kind of college type shit into what you are now, which is, and I've we've seen what some of that transition was. It was a lot with TikTok. And we should talk about all that. But how do you like mentally transition into what you are now, which is a fucking global brand, bro? You're doing commercials. You told me you couldn't do the the show the other day because you were doing a fucking commercial, bro. Yeah. Damn. Like yeah. what? Damn. Like everybody wants gravy to be the face of their brand right now, dude. It's man, they, they want what's popping, bro. And I, I, <laughs> I, I, and I, I, I just had Betty pop off, and and I did, man. The the bags this past year was just like hella shows coming in and hella like i was basically Shaq for a little while i yeah. was doing every every brand deal that came in as long as i could like choose the creative on it i would do it you're so, bag grabbing you're so grabbing it was, them, it was like pizza hut it was like uh samsung there's a few other ones and as long as i could make it like my like sexy vibe everything i turned into something horny and they were they loved it they want it those are all great brands by the way too it's not like you were like taking some dumb bags those are like world-renowned yeah. like global entities you know what i'm saying like that's crazy yeah yeah so 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 i don't know i mean the brand i i figured i'd have a year of of the shack moves uh, rack up the bag a little bit and then maybe you know slow it down yeah, a little bit yeah, yeah, figure yeah. it out what was the yeah. what was the one that you got that you were just like what was the holy shit moment brand wise for you Martha Stewart. Damn, oh that's God. right. I you forgot know, I, about I, I that. I got to tell you all about the whole story, man. <laughs> because I, I wrote the song Martha Stewart. It was on my album Gasanova, made it during uh, COVID. Probably right around the same time that I heard you spitting bars. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> spitting flames. <laughs> and, <laughs> spitting gas. <laughs> and I, uh, man, I fucking made a song called Martha Stewart uh, because she kind of embodies everything gravy, you know? She, she, she got locked up. 100%. 
We both we both been locked up. She she's in the kitchen. I stay in the kitchen, man. <laughs> I mean the studio at least. Uh, she stays with milfs. I stay with milfs. All that. So I, so I made a song called Martha Stewart, and then basically like three months later, her team hit me up and they're like, "Yo, Martha heard it. Someone put her on. She wants you to like. She wants you to fucking." be part of this commercial <laughs> so what we ended up doing man it was way bigger than i even thought it was going to be it was like a minute long thing where like we like facetimed and and did all this shit we facetimed and and uh basically i, I promoted her whole brand and and for, for some new products she had she's keen man. And, bro come and, on and, and it was playing bro it was playing at every it was when james bond came out the no time to die yeah they had it playing in every theater that was playing that movie. The, the did you take? Week. Did you take a girl to the theater when the movie was out? And just I like, took my boy. Oh, that's weird. I took my boy to the theater. I was on tour, and me and my photographer just went in, and like we walked in the front door, and they were like, "Oh my god, Young Gravy!" And I was like, "Yo, we just we need our own uh, theater, and I need y'all to play this movie." So we can see the trailers. That's so sick. So we just sat in there, just me and one other dude, <laughs> and we watched it, man. It was a beautiful moment. Martha yeah. Martha Stewart, the funny thing about it is like you would you would think if you just hadn't known anything about her that the collab was so like strange. But Martha Stewart is like she's, she's gone gang, bro. Yeah. Like she's for the set a hundred percent because she's done shit with Snoop. Like she don't fuck around, dude. I'm I would not be surprised if Martha has some bodies. Some bro. gang bang. No, shit. for real. I'm not even 100%, playing. Dude. 100%. She's a bad bitch. She's a bad bitch. She knows how to work a knife. Like I could see her. She does. Yeah. We want her on the show bad, bro. If you could if you could wild. help facilitate, bro, at some point. I mean, we we got a decent sized platform. She might want to come on to promote some shit. She's down with that kind of stuff. Man. That would be And you fire. know she's so breaded up, but she's still down to just like fuck around. Like we'll wear people. sweaters. Like we'll go to the yeah. Hamptons. We don't give a shit. We'll bro. do it. Yeah, we'll do it. Hey, can I can I say something to you? I want to say something. I, to there's you. no other time to say this. All right. Or there's no good time to say this. Our th our we have another co-host on the show. Uh. He's missing today. Once again, I we were supposed to say this in the beginning of the episode. Gravy was magically appeared in the chair. George is home right now. He's celebrating his birthday. Happy birthday, George. Happy birthday, George, again. George. Again. But yet, yeah, well, this is the first time. He's prioritizing his family and friends, which we love. And George uh will be back soon. He we didn't kill him. He wasn't murdered. Martha Stewart, none of it. He's just not here today. <laughs> Robert Stewart him. did not kill George. Kill George. <laughs> uh, as far as we know. Back uh, to the program. What I was going to say is it's crazy to me and also cool how um, young musicians, especially rappers, it looks like nowadays, are just are just manifesting these relationships in their songs. Martha Stewart song. Next thing you know, you're collabing with Martha Stewart. Jack Harlow made a song about Dua Lipa. Next thing you know, he's dating Dua Lipa. Like you can use your vehicle of artistry to make the life that you want. It's insane. And, wow. and great timing because, uh, you know, what, in like two hours. I'm walking the red carpet with Lisa Ann for the Avian oh, Awards. Great. And that, st that started because I, I put her in a verse. No fuck it. That's what I'm saying. That's crazy, yeah. bro. I mean, that's the that's queen I mean, of MILFs. Yeah, she's the queen of, she's the goat. She's there's, goated. There's, it mirrors in a way because for my birthday one year, you gifted me with an introduction to a girl who you said was my dream girl. And then I met her and we started dating. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, it's it's funny how the art manifests that type of shit. Is, you know what I'm saying? True. Like, it's that crazy. It really is fucking wild, bro. Are you, are you, I mean, not, it's, it's not a question, more of a statement. You're the, <laughs> you're the, mil, you're the MILF hunter, dude. Like you're, you're the, you're the, you're the, you're the, you're the king of MILFs. Correct. Uh, you got some, some, some amazing MILFs under your belt. Uh, Lisa Ann is, is next up, huh? I mean, <laughs> Next up, I mean, mean, yeah, I mean, she, she was next up. I appreciate that. She, she, she's <laughs> a sweetheart, man. We've, we, we've known each other for a while now. We've hung out a few times. I mean, the, the 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 biggest one would be um, uh, Addison's mom. Uh, overly saying, I don't know. Okay, okay, I don't want to hate on the on, on Addison's mom. She's she was a sweetheart. That created a lot of fucking press. Yeah, that was that was a that was one of the biggest events of. They the blew year. that shit crazy right, out of right, proportion. Right. Where I literally was like, you know what? I want to date to the to the VMAs. I have been flirting with this girl online, and also her husband has been trying to like piss me off. And I'm 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 not gonna be petty and like make some response to him. But like, if I could bring his wife to this shit, I could be kind of tight. <laughs> so. 
oh, I think demon. it worked. Right? Demon, I think man. it worked, bro. <laughs> the, the main thing was, man, I just, I just, you know, she she seemed mad cool when I needed a date. And I actually did hit up Martha Stewart as well. She couldn't, she couldn't, <laughs> she couldn't make it. Wait, does, does, at what point does MILF become GILF? Uh, I couldn't tell you, brother. It's, it's all the same. It's all the same to me. <laughs> Qu question for you. What, with all the shit that was going on with uh, Miss Ray or whatever you want to call it. Mrs. Mrs. Ray. Miss. Not nah, Miss. Did you ever talk to Addison because I, and, and gauge her feelings on the situation? I don't know if you've talked mm -hmm. about this on a show before, but as a, as a, as a outside onlooker, I always feel for these younger creators, regardless of that situation. You pull it out of the out of the microscope for a second. Growing up in the public eye and just with the commentary that goes on on social it's media wild. is is I don't know how these kids do it. Like it's even hard for me. I'm 37. I know who I am. I know what the fuck I've been through. I'm very confident in myself. I know who I am. But it, there are days when that shit even fucks with me. So I could never I could never imagine being like a uh, you know like this up and coming kid in that space. And so I was really curious how she received the situation, which had a bunch of notes of, you know, family drama, public, you know, this this kind of like vibe of being an onlooker to this really like this family scenario for all to see and how she felt about you kind of like playing into it. Yeah. So I, I actually had met her a while back because she, she she's a fan. Uh, I met her at a meet, a meet and greet before she was super famous. Like, oh, like. Like way back in the day, she came to my meet and greet, oh, believe it or not. Uh, I believe with Avani. And um, I could have that mixed up, but I'm pretty sure she did. Sure. Anyways, I'd met, I'd met her before. And uh, when Sh Sherry and I started just like, you know, chatting a little bit, I, I, I hit up Addison and so did Sherry. And I was like, do I have permission to like bring her to the to the, not the avians the the vmas <laughs> but to the vmas and we got the thumbs up on it but she was like you know be nice blah 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 i i think it's really like i don't want to just say the ex-husband or whatever is just a complete asshole but yep. he, i think he kind of just took everything and and made it into drama to get bring attention to himself because because it was like She's newly single, wanted a date. I'm not trying to, like, I wasn't trying to just get clout off of that. I wanted to, like, bring her on a date and show her a good time. And, like, you know, I had no idea it was going to blow up like that and have some crazy, like, like people were comment like, or, you know, like, the, the, the most toxic of all is, like, the Snapchat. Yeah. yeah. We were just having this oh conversation yesterday. The Snapchat tiles for the news uh, outlets <laughs> are fucking ruthless. It, Crazy. it was literally like, like, like I would look at Twitter and people would be like, hell yeah, slay Sherry. Like you, you're single now. You're killing it. Look at Instagram. People are like, oh my God, cute, cute ass moment, blah, blah, blah. And then on Snapchat, it's like rapper ruining family. It was like, <laughs> oh, it was no. like, it was like. 26 year difference no not i don't know what the year difference was whatever the year right. age difference is they were like freaking out about it i was like man like people are just want to get attention off those, of anything those tiles bro they'll like photoshop black eyes on like to a girl and just be like rapper be like where are these things coming it from it's so wild man so so i don't know i think moral of the story is i wanted to bring her on a cute date i didn't know shit about the vmas i had never watched it before i didn't know that it was that big of a deal so when I, you know, walked, walked with her and all these stories came out, it blew up way bigger than I expected. And it sounded like, I mean, from Addison, like, I, I think that she was more just mad at her dad for being such a fucking weirdo. He, I don't know if you also have a diss track. He made a diss track. She made a diss track. Yeah, I did it. see that. I did see that. Oh, you you want to know, the, the funny thing about it is we have had a ton of experience with him i mean in, in, no, i mean in, not a, not a ton but i mean we've had a bunch of run-ins with him we I, that's the way to put it and yeah, take that sure, as sure. literal as possible Bro, i'll not, be pulling I mean, out of a parking garage sure. and he runs up sure. to my window is like yo what's up and like you know monty's always been i won't use the word cool i'll use the word enthusiastic and I appreciate enthusiasm, you know. Mm -hmm. And then, what specifically with that whole drama, and I'm, we can move past it because who gives a fuck? And I'm sure it's old. But like, I did feel bad for Addison because, like, absolutely that that he 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 did put it in a just an awkward position. It didn't have to be as awkward as it was. Yeah. Uh, anyways, anyways, Holly, and, Hollywood, bro. I, I I feel bad too, man. I think I had a little part of it, but but and and I feel bad for her and what she had to, you know, 
deal with in that in that time but like it really was like you know homeboy that was trying to like i mean i was get seeing attention. it bro. Yeah, i was, he was trying to it. get attention off of his own daughter it's well, like it's like dog like just so i won't i won't bring up like any of the specific accusations from that time because i'm not i'm not going to do that but like i saw some of the tiktoks like on his channel thereafter and was just kind of like what what are we what are we doing here you yeah, know what i'm saying like where are we going he was spiraling man it I, was gnarly I, I think combined with the probably just a natural life spiral he was having and then Man, it's just crazy what clout can do to people. Um, mm -hmm. And I've been there. It can, it can just, it can twist you into someone that you're not. So, like, I empathize with him. And and seeing and seeing your, seeing like as as innocent and like jovial as your desires were for that situation, like him seeing that play out had to have just really. Like, bro, he was just taking L after L after L after L after L. And there's a there's a t point in life where you can't take any more L's, bro. And you start to, as opposed to coming up with, like, a solution yeah, for you how just, you're going to return to victories, you just spiral out of control. Yeah, and you just float into space never to be found again. I was just and trying that to sucks, bro. I was just trying to handle it, like, the gravy way, man. I wasn't responding in any confrontational way. I was like, you know what? Like. You kind of look like like I think I made one response, which was like, "Hey, brother, like just chill out. Like this is this isn't anything personal." And then he made like ten more videos about me. And then I said, "You know what? I'm just gonna stay silent. I'll bring his ex wife to the, to the <laughs> bro. Yeah, the, gravy way, the gravy way. The gravy way is yeah, he was smooth. It's funny because he's like, nah, I'm not gonna like you know cause any real trouble or fight the guy." The gravy way is way more violent. Way more it's violent. violent. I mean, <laughs> well, no, no, no. It's, He's single. It's, they're divorced. I mean, I wouldn't say violent. I mean, it, nah, it's a bit of a flex. It's a flex on him. <laughs> but but I actually wanted to meet her, and she was such a sweetheart. We've kicked it since. That's awesome. Well, all right, let's switch it up. So we're, so we're at- well, I just ahead. want to say one thing, yeah, go bro. for it. Sorry. Take your headphones off and then put them back on. There's a one little loop. Yeah, up top. Is my hair looking fucked up? No, no, no it's just really. one little part, and I know if it were me, I would like someone to say something. It's, oh, it's, yeah, we wanted that anyways. Do that into the camera down the pipe. Boy, you, just you don't mind doing that again. That's good. You want me to do it again? Okay, hold up. No, that's, no, you don't that's, to... that's good. Just... Oh, damn. Okay, okay, perfect. Perfect. Oh, it looks I had good. To say, I had to say something. Thank no, that you, was bro. worth it. Thank you for doing that, bro. It's gonna... what I do, bro. That was good. You know, it's, yeah, I'm here to run a show. Mm -hmm. Uh, I want. I want. I did want to talk about TikTok a little bit. Yeah, uh, go. Th that, that seems like a good transition. Mm -hmm, sure. Talk about a TikTok star. Talk about now. A lot of your music blew up on TikTok. You're 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 not a TikTok artist, but damn, you have hacked TikTok. Yeah, that's true. Kind of. Yeah, I would say. You know, what's funny is is. is I don't know. Some of TikTok rapper really pisses me off. So it's like, I like, knew. I and I have this. Not what in I'm my saying. Notes. Not what I'm saying. No, I wanted to talk to you about yeah. this, and I and and I know that you. And, and he knows, and that's not like he said what he was saying, but you were creating music prior to TikTok even being a fucking thing. For, creating music, yeah. music that was picked up, like people were fucking with it, rocking with it, right? Do you get pissed off when the vehicle that you chose to then elevate that music to the next level becomes definitive of who you are as a person? I don't really get pissed off because, I mean, like TikTok's helped me out a lot and, and I got love for TikTok, but it's it's just funny when like, People who have just been ignorant to it for years, and like I, I had multiple platinum records before TikTok existed, and then when TikTok became a thing, at first I, I, I like it now. At first I hated it, and they would just blow my songs up on there. You know, it wasn't like I did, and obviously there was no way that I could have strategically <laughs> made these songs for TikTok, which people like to like you know think is how Their artists eyes, do it these yeah. days uh so it was just like i was just like a friendly figure for the tiktok community and they wanted to use my music and i had some unique shit that they could use um so like the other day i don't know just just it happens every once in a while where someone be like oh yeah you're like you're like the tiktok rapper and i'm like, oh, well, like I'm, I'm not see that would frustrate me because if if it frustrates me like yo social media other creators their engines for uh amplification but at the end of the day if there is no real product to amplify the product will never exist and so i deal with this sometimes too i mean i i see comments about logan without logan without lana without these people without me you can't amp so if he's the rocket fuel and lana's the rocket fuel without a rocket there's no mission. Do you understand what I'm saying? So like no matter what people have to say about TikTok as an amplification device, without gravy being gravy, mm -hmm. there's no gravy. I like, I like how you put that, man. You feel that? 
I mean, I think I think the only there was only one time where I actually did myself like sort of strategically put in some input sure. on on TikTok, which was when um, I was helping a friend who was managing OnlyFans girls, and my song "Oops" was out, and I was Great like. Song. And it was starting to pop off. And I was like, yo, there's this part where I talk about Tracy, Tracy with the ass, blah, blah, blah. I was like, you know what? He was looking for a, a good way to for his girls to kind of like promote their cheeks. And, and I said, you know what? I think <laughs> this part of the song could be pretty ideal. So I started sort of that trend that is what blew the, oh, ended up blowing the song up. Oh, you started that? What ended up blowing the song up. That yeah, was usually, the big one. A lot of times the trends kind of happen on their own. Like Betty, the Rick Astley song kind of just went off on its own. I mean, I was hyping it up a lot. But like all the trends that happened were kind of just natural. But the, and oops, I did like literally pitch it to this guy. I was like, yo, try this. Genius, also extremely hard. To, to Like you said, a lot of trends happen naturally. And I, we just said this on another show. To reverse engineer anything Ooh. viral is is almost impossible. So it's funny. It's funny that you were able to do that when you had already made the song. Mm -hmm. And and um, I, I, I don't want to, this to come off like, condescending in any way but like dude i've been i've been many things in my life so i can relate to the frustration it feels when you when you feel and know that you're so much more than a thing and people box you back into just you know tiktok rap or whatever whatever it is logan uh, paul's friend logan paul's friend <laughs> jake paul's brother look i get it bro I, I i understand but but you know who you are right so you you're not you, you don't give a shit you're not trying to impress anyone and at the end of the day you're you're on a you're on a, a path that is very unique to you um but i did want to ask like where do you see your music and your sound going uh because you said you started in college we've had a lot of rappers and artists on the show that's relatively late a lot of these kids have been doing it their whole life right like and, and you exploded and became this entity so quickly but where do you go where do you see yourself going man i don't want to get uh too popping that's that, that's one thing is like betty was a little bit too much bro it was hectic like like i can't really go anywhere anymore without getting like run up on everywhere so like but i like the i, the, I like the thought of of me you know I'd, I'd love to have another hit or two you know what i'm saying or 10 but but I don't want like I don't want to become like Post Malone or like an artist where I'm like way way mainstream. Uh, and I, I think that with my music that wouldn't really make sense. Like like sort of what I've seen over the years is that like I'll drop an album or two and a couple songs on each will like become big, and then I'll have I'll I'll just like everyone at this point will like kind of know my name and they'll be like oh like I know Mr. Clean I know One Thought I know Cheryl I know Betty whatever. And then I'll drop another one and then another song will pop off. And I really like that trajectory because right. it's kind of like I could still do big ass shows. I have a cult fan base that are awesome. Uh, but I don't want to like be able to, I don't want to have to hide in my damn house. Bro, it's kind of, yo, when we were out at dinner the other night, because I'm, I'm used to it, you know what I'm saying? We take a shit ton of pictures, like we meet a lot of cool people, whatever. But for some reason, when girls especially, but people see you, it, it was this very heightened, yo, that's your gravy! Yeah, like, bro, so, it was... So, so distinct, dude. You're yeah, yeah, yeah. seven feet yeah, tall, yeah, and yeah, everyone yeah. knows what you look like. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. There were some like, freak out moments. Like, like I was like, damn, this is... Because it was cool, bro. It was cool to be around that it, shit. It that depends funny. where I'm at, but some people will just... Yeah, I, I can't go back to my home state, really. I mean, I, I go back, and I'm, and I'm low-key, but, like, anywhere in Minnesota, I'm just like, it's... I'm a target man. That's a crazy place to make it out from and, and have the success you've had. Minnesota, I just I, wait. We, we talked about Minneapolis a little bit. We were all there. We together. were in Minneapolis. Yeah, together. yeah. Holy right. shit! Yeah, I, I didn't right. realize you were from that yeah. area. Yeah. Or, yeah, insane. Oh, so that's why when we were at the Aoki shit, that people are going nuts, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were all there together for the Aoki that's shit. That's right. That's, that's my home. My home. I, I've done two two headline shows at that same venue the armory and it's, it's that venue is insane oh that's an in, that is a crazy insane venue. Venue. man we sold me we sold on the baby gary tour we sold seven thousand tickets there in like like two months or something <laughs> i don't know it was insane that was one of the first sold out shows and that's that's a lot for me are 7, you 000. are you a vikings fan i am now yeah now that i asked you or just like a joke <laughs> no 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 no, no, no. I, I i definitely have kind of been just not you know, super focused in on sure. uh, on the NFL over the years. I like I like hockey, I like basketball, but the the Vikings asked me to perform at their game on Thanksgiving. Oh yeah, yeah, which was the right. the day before my last Armory show, and uh, man, I got to meet everybody. And I mean, performing at my it was my first NFL game I'd ever been to. 
And sick. I got to I got to perform that. Sick. It's so crazy. Sick. So uh I'm a fan now for sure. And 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 I've been watching every game. And That's yeah, cool. man. I it's like it. a it's like a whirlwind for you right now, bro. I mean, I mean, look at where we are right now. We're at the AVNs. I wanna talk about that for a second too, but it's like I, I you know, I think I've got to, and I, I think you went through it very similarly too. I've got to experience things in like sectors and like silos a little bit, like had some adult stuff, then got to do some cool sports stuff. You're seeing it all right now, like mm-hmm. everything. You're getting invited to every event. You're the hot shit, every fucking thing, bro. It is wild, yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you, are you like getting a chance to like really embrace it and like like understand what's going on as you move from event to event? Are you taking a second to sit and be like, damn, that just happened? Like, that was crazy. Not really, <laughs> not really, man. It's been it's been it's been crazy busy, uh, and it's like just things keep coming up, and we'll have a schedule planned for a month, and it'll be like, oh yeah, I got a few things going on, and just more things keep coming in, coming in, coming in. I'm doing like X Games in a couple weeks. Let's go. The NAS- winter Winter X Winter X Where Games is, it? is like Aspen. Or Aspen. Oh wait, when, dude? I'm coming. To April that. like 26. Oh, I, think. I gotta come to that. Yeah, man, pull bro. up, and then and then I'm doing uh, NASCAR. Some some that shit with we NASCAR. Love NASCAR. NASCAR. We love NASCAR. We love NASCAR. We love NASCAR. Yeah, NASCAR. I think it's their first. It's it's their first race of the year, and I think it's in LA. Oh, in well, we should do something with should. that so too. We should all pull up. We should. Up. We should. Yeah. I uh. I uh. Yeah, I feel you. Can we stick with AVN? Was, or are you going? You got I, it? I, yeah, I was going to say something. It's like a fishing rod. Pull it in. I found that I've uh, been a little a little brain dead today. I got nothing. It bro. happens. AVN. I got nothing. You bring it back. I'm going to. These, these glasses are stressing me out. I feel like someone's going to pick those yeah, over. Yeah, I, I won't. Perfect. All right. Fuck it. There they go. Hate to see it. Hate to see <laughs> something like that happen. Destructive. So. Power oh, 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 got Power it. I got, oh, it. I got it. So it worked. Sorry, got Dylan. It, it worked. So it okay. works. All right. Thanks. Okay. Perfect. Um, Mike and I were talking the other day. As we do. As we do. And we were we were talking about how how time in the last like three to five years seems so different than the previous three to five years before <laughs> that. You've had a career explosion in the past five years. But something about the way technology, pop culture, social media has has blossomed, has condensed so much in such a little amount of time that like five years and time just doesn't seem to be going by as slow as it used to. Like everything is happening so quickly in the past five years, there's been fucking wars all over the world. We've survived the pandemic. Artists that didn't exist are now the biggest in the world. Uh, there's new genres of sports. Like, it's insane, man. Do you ever feel like it's going too fast? Like, you got to take a break sometimes and really enjoy what the fuck is happening. Yeah, it stresses me out, man. I saw some video that was like a, a deep fake. You seen the deep fake shit? <laughs> like, what the fuck, man? There was one that looked like it the other day where Elon, because Elon was talking shit about Logan and everybody thought that was a deep fake. <laughs> And I'm, it was I'm, real, I'm, I'm gonna pull this up. I'm gonna pull no, this it was up. Real, bro. No, because I've seen some crazy deep fake shit. This that, one that, was freak, not. that freaks me out, man. And and I don't know. There's just so much new sh- Like five years ago, I don't think TikTok existed five years ago. Nah. And COVID didn't exist five years ago. I don't think so. They might it have was, just been starting it. It was but that was when I started rapping. It was like SoundCloud, Instagram was just starting. Right. Like things changed so fast, man. You saved it? Because you might. That's not it, right? It would be I in the group. It would be in the group chat. Just find the link. Is it a link? Yeah, just find the link. I gotta in the group find chat. it. Elon Musk was talking shit. Yeah, dude, yeah, going talking ham fucking shit. about him. Bro. It's kind of hard. Honestly. No, it was, bro. I it's saw fire. it. and I was like, bro, that's a hundred percent accurate, bro. I was with Elon on where, it, bro. Where, where, where oh, would man, this, I, where would this be? So you're with him or you with Elon? I found it. No, uh, no, Elon. No, he, I took Elon's side. Of course, hundred percent. It's the dude's never wrong. Well, he lost a lot of money this year. I think that's maybe why he was upset. All right, here we go. I found it in two seconds. Here, you want to hold it? Yeah. All right, yeah, just start it over. Start it over. Look at this dude. So Logan Paul wants to say Jesus and God isn't real. How about I install a microchip into your head so you get more educated, you brain dead steroid abusing motherfucker. <laughs> I need to take the biggest shit out of my asshole right now. <laughs> bro, like so Elon Logan. was going crazy. That is that some day, of the craziest bro, wording I've ever heard. <laughs> He's going crazy. I can't believe he said that about me. That and I saw I mean, it. I think God is real. I believe in God. Stop this narrative. <laughs> Just fucking organized religion pisses me off sometimes because of the yeah, intolerance. What's yeah, good, dude? But enough. Elon, you got, 
Take that shit out of your asshole, bro. Don't bring me into this. That, that was, was crazy. Wild. And then people started te- messaging me about it. And I'm like, yo, did you see uh, what Elon said? And somebody said, do you think this is a deep fake? And I said, no. <laughs> that one is real, bro. Because deep fakes, here's the thing. Deep fakes say funny shit. What Elon said right there was fucking facts, bro. Like, I back, I back what Elon said, bro. Oh, man. It's, bro. it's scary, man. That shit is just hilarious. I mean, it's legendary if you get someone that popping and, uh, like, genius. That's the richest man in the world, right? Right. Well, yeah. well he I don't, about you. he was, I, so he's actually not popping right now. He just became the first, I say just, hopefully it's close to just, just became the first person to ever lose $200 billion. Whoa. So Tesla is actually down just about 80% on the year, which is fucking insane. The macro market suffering in general. We're yeah. not going to turn this into a finance program, but Tesla has been getting its ass beat. You know, he bought Twitter. Twitter's been getting its fucking ass beat in yeah, terms of like public. Twitter. He's some people say he didn't. He says he didn't. He said Twitter's at a higher use than all time and more people have signed up and more people are using it. So maybe that is the case. Regardless, numbers don't lie. Scoreboard. He lost to over two hundred billion dollars. And I don't think he is that the is richest wild. man anymore. I think he might have dropped a few spots. I don't think he gives a fuck. No, no, he doesn't. You know, because he's on Twitter making jokes. Here's what Elon says. And we can all decide if we believe that this or not. And some a lot of people do. Elon says that his goal is to make a positive impact on the planet. That's it. That's his goal. And the money is a, is a side effect of that. He's trying to basically save the human civilization. If he does like the the whole, uh, what was it, L.A., like the, the roads oh, the he tunnel. wants to do. The Ta- tunnel, yeah, the, what's he does, if he does all that it's stuff. It's like a cannon that can, sh- it like basically is the same as shooting someone out of a cannon. It's a little tunnel, hyperloop. Underground, hyperloop. Yeah, and you shoot someone, like you put a little human in it, and you sh- It's like... um. The, the, the science for it, Gravy. That sounds wild. He That's not what a, I was no, talking about. He created a massive, like, a pinball machine when you pull the thing back, and you sit in the ball. You put a human in there? Yes, dish? and it yeah, shoots yeah. you from, like, La Brea down to, like, the beach in Santa Monica in, like, one second, bro. <laughs> Man, what I was talking about was... <laughs> Oh, you talking about so, the chips? Some no, no, no. Some shit he was he was saying about fixing traffic in LA. Yeah, that's, like, that's it. it. That's it. He turns you into a it's pinball. A, it's Your under, whole car? No, or? no car. You just sit in it. I think it might be a. I think nah, it might be nah, car nah, based. Nah. I, I think it might be when you shoot kidding. Teslas. It's I'm getting numb. nods. You can it park your who's Tesla saying, in who's not in? and it shoots you like a pinball who's machine. Not in? It's not true. Jorge was not. No, Dylan was. If Jorge is nodding, I'm with it, bro. I swear that. I, I thought there was gonna be like some. It was like underground tunnels or like. No, some, it, it is. It is. But it's an underground. But tunnel. it's for just like to drive in. Not. No. 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 It's okay. It's everybody, stop. <laughs> Shut up. Not you, Gravy, because you're the guest. You. Let me just say this. It's a. It's like a train, basically, that is able to accelerate to a speed that other trains are not able to through some sort of Elon Musk locomotive system. <laughs> okay, I don't know what the fuck it is. If it's electromagnetic, if it's. It's clearly not jet fuel inspired, but in my eyes, it's a fucking pinball. I have a question. And a thing pulls back and just cranks <laughs> it. Is there and a That's fixing traffic somehow. That's yeah, because why. then you're not driving. You're in the ground. Being shot. At being a shot out of a miles cannon. An hour. <laughs> one, at a, like one at a time? Or are they nah, going to have like a big You put a bunch ass. of people That's in That's what it. I'm confused about. No, it's about. a bunch of people. You could put a few people in it. This can't be when it, when it drops, traffic. When it, when it drops, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll do some research. Like 10 on, people at time. once. Sorry, sorry. 10 on. people me, per hour. Figure it out. Figure it out. When it drops, we're all going together. Is there a chance that Elon has bitten off more than he can chew? Yeah. I mean, I think he fucked up Twitter a little bit. I, I can't look at my notifications anymore because everyone's oh, verified. Oh, that's fucking so annoying. true. Everyone's fucking that part's so true, everyone's bro. Everyone's verified. I'm like, oh, I don't know who you are, man. You paid eight bucks for this. Yeah. And now you, my friends are getting filtered out and shit. That's obnoxious. Do you Do you want it? Right now, uh, a proposed high speed transportation system for both public and goods transport. The idea was picked up to describe a modern project based on the VAC train concept. A VAC train or a vacuum tube train is proposed designed for a very high speed rail transportation, magnetic levitation. So, so basically, I've heard about that. Correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've all been on the roller coasters before that do this. You sit there, and what they do is they use reverse magnets. To propel uh, a train uh, at a speed unbeknownst to man. You sound so confident about it. You know I, exactly I feel pretty good. Yeah. I feel pretty good. All right. But my thought on it is, is there a chance you end up in the Twilight Zone? Which we watched on yeah, New we Yeah, that was the first thing we did that and day. And that's how I knew I fucked with you because you are, as I am, about the fucking culture. You I knew love, about Rod Serling. I love Twilight Zone. Is man, that true? OG. 
Yeah, man. I'm really into like old film. Oh, shit. Yeah. I the Twilight Zone shit. walked so Black Mirror could run. So a lot of other shows could run. You watch Black Mirror? It was funny because we were with some girls and we were like, yo, this is such a legendary episode. This is crazy. And they're all like, all right. Did you see this TikTok about <laughs> yeah. that? Like, we're, we're like so hyped on this episode of Twilight Zone. They're like, well, okay. Well, it's niche, <laughs> it's niche stuff. And they're, and, and the thing that I'm learning that I love, and I feel like Gravy, you, you, will love this too or already know this you're 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 an entertainer for the masses and you'll you'll hit your niches but like lately i found that hitting a niche and hitting it good is enough and you like if we wanted to we could start a podcast about the twilight zone and for every episode break down an episode and we would have enough viewers to get sponsors for that show yeah, if that we makes did sense. it right, that do makes not sense. be scared of hitting your niches, dude. I'm telling you, there's a lot of people out there who are trying to be big rappers or trying to be big internet creators, but they're not trying to be the biggest rapper who embodies a 1970s flow and brings the swag and brings all that to the table or creators that also are boxers and storytellers. Find your niche, bro. Speaking Find facts. your fucking Speaking niche. That is the only way facts. to break through right now. I swear to God, bro. Be special, unique. You have to. A niche. And just like, I think it's really important to just be a nice person too. That's number one. Can't be a dick. What's it, What's that saying? It's uh, nice to be important, but it's important to be nice. More important to be nice. Very true. Wow. It's such I a haven't good heard saying. that. That's cute. Yeah, That's cool, like that. right? That's cute. Mad, mad cute. Mad cute. Yeah. You know who else is cute? A lot of the girls at AVN. Yeah, there were a lot of bad bitches around. You making your way around the... Uh, convention. The AVN. I explored the convention. <laughs> I explored the convention. I discovered that I have a lot of... Uh, Fan crossover with porn viewers because because I we, we were watching we were walking through there and I was more famous than all the porn stars at that. They point. said that to me yesterday too. They go, "You've taken a hundred more pictures than any girl." That's yeah, here. I was like putting my hat over my eyes <laughs> and like trying to hide out, man. But but I, well, you've worked with them. I've worked with them. And so and what does that to, mean? Just so I can clarify, what does that mean? Both, both, both content. worked with them. Yeah, I worked with them. Yeah, I worked with them. over the years, Over you know, years, hung out, hung them. out, worked. You know, I, I had some I actually had some porn filmed at my house. Y'all go on uh, Pornhub and look up Young Gravy. There's like a require they, they paid me to do it, but I, I required that I have a little bit of a cameo in the in the. In the oh, video. yeah. 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 So so both of them, I walk in and I bring in like a, a little bowl of fruit. Are you I, it's, 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 it's lesbian <laughs> porn that they filmed in my house. Lesbian porn. This is but incredible. I, but I walked in at the beginning of both episodes and I was like, oh, did somebody order a fruit basket? <laughs> and then they used fruit during their lesbian activities. Yeah. You ever think about putting that fucking hammer online? You know what I'm saying? Because I've been, I, you got, I'm sure you shoot a little bit, right? Uh, I don't shoot porn. I mean, I've, when I've had girlfriends, we'll film ourselves. No, but that's know. what I mean. Because I got some, I got some good high profile shit you know and i've been thinking about popping it out we talked about how my shit got leaked right yeah yeah oh, my man yeah i had a i mean it, but it was funny it wasn't that bad it was I, I had a video that was on my phone and i got hacked and then like two years later they drop it on on twitter did you lay it down it though up. or no like were you putting in it putting no in i mean honestly like i was putting it work but it was kind of more like wholesome than anything because like uh -huh. the camera turns around and i'm like smiling in the camera and laughing uh -huh. and i'm like oh I got a leg cramp. It's kind of funny. Oh, See, that's cool. Yeah, that's that cool. is. Leg cool. cramps happen. Yeah, because yeah. that's yeah. the thing. Like, if your shit leaks, like you want that to be like the most badass. Like you're fucking getting it in because the last thing that you want is to like a leg cramp's fine. That's funny. That's niche, right? Yeah, niche leg yeah. cramps. But like, if you if you're like, oh man, uh, sorry, babe, it's been a real long day today. Like, and I don't know, work's been stressful. I, uh, uh, it'll get up soon enough, and that leaks out. Like, <laughs> damn, bro, that <laughs> shit's gonna <laughs> suck. I also don't want to have, like, I don't know. I was afraid. I, I got young fans. I got wholesome yeah. fans. I don't want a video to drop where I was, like, doing some really crazy shit, freaky shit, saying some weird, you know. That's where I'm people, at, too. People I'm in the listen to your music a little differently, I think. Because in the back of their mind, they'll know, you know, you stapled a girl to the door yeah. while she was in a, a nurse outfit. Like, yeah. You don't want that. It's why I'm afraid to to, to film <laughs> anything. I, I just won't do it because uh, if it gets hacked, or my, I get hacked and it gets leaked. Like, um, I just don't think it'd be a good look for the yeah, future. Absolutely. I mean, that video was the best possible one to, that could have gotten leaked. Maybe they had a little bit of respect when they like looked. Maybe it was the only one on iCloud. I don't know. But like, I mean, other videos that I'd have with, with with like my exes and shit were just like 
It was just normal ass, like, you know, like Missionary. relationship sex. Because it's like the shit that fucking like when uh Pornoy gets hit, bro, like he gets smacked, bro. For yeah, that it was shit. not well, bad. Well, because he's not. running it and he, he's, he's running it and he owns it. And that's what you got to fucking yeah, do, bro. If you, hey, if you're fucking hard, you just got to say you're fucking hard. I, own, I owned it and I just responded. I was like, man, like, I'm really sorry to all the MILFs out there that there's not proof that I fuck normal women as well uh, right uh, not normal women milfs normal girls women. out girls yeah. that are my age right uh that was my whole expose right there i can see how that's disappointing for yeah so i was like that was my apology but it was like you know the video was cute do do do, do moms give you a little extra mm, attention hey young gravy oh, you yeah. want me to make you a sandwich oh yeah oh no any anywhere we're at like they'll either recognize me because of their kids being fans of me or they'll just know and like like you know, there's I'd say there's at this point it's getting to the point where it's like just as many milfs are walking up for a picture or like to try to hit on me as as much as a college girl is. I wanted to ask about this. Not now that now that you're famous, now that you're popping, I, I imagine, you know, sliding into DMs, hitting on women and, and having that be uh, much easier for you. Is it, is, is it nice? Are you in reaping the benefits of that? I had I had a phase where I did for a while. I, I definitely did that for a while. Um and at this point, it's just kind of like I've had like girls try to like, you know, see the messages like, like I'll literally like talk to a girl for a little while and then end up curving them. And then they get mad and they like post Public. all of it, post all of the Internet. Uh, I'm yeah, like, sure. So yeah. do you want to know I'm how you solve it. that problem forever? Never DM, always just field DMs. As soon as a girl DMs you, it changes the dynamic completely. That's what it usually because is. Because as long as, I know, but as yeah. long as you can show that if they do that, pull that kind of shit, that they hit you first, it changes the dynamic because they won't show it. I only field shit. See, I don't even want to reply to some shit like that. I don't even want to like give them the time of day. It's just well, like- if they're dope. I, I guess, it's but if, trap, they're, if they're dope- No, then it's not always a trap. It's a trap. It's sometimes, always a trap. Bro, sometimes a girl that has 20, Top forty times more followers than you will hit you up. That's a be, trap. How is that a trap? Because you're gonna get that exposes more pregnant. about them than you. Oh, you're gonna get it. You ever, you get, you get ever get thought about getting pregnant, pregnant Gravy? Personally, have I ever thought about getting pregnant? <laughs> <laughs> he said it. Not yet, man. Shit. When, when they invent that, hell yeah. yeah. Elon Musk is working on it right now. Artificial wombs. <laughs> have you know? Have you noticed as you wander around this this thing here? Because I've been I've been uh, working with these people for a long time. Yeah, getting worked. That these girls, bro, are the coolest. Mm -hmm. I mean, bro, these so girls are earth. the coolest. So down to earth, so chill. It's funny because so many people watch the content. I know it's still semi-taboo, even though we talk about it. But, you know, newsflash, the adult industry is bigger than the MLB, NFL, and NBA combined. Nobody's shaking it up or doing anything. It's a $150 billion a year industry. Like, Crazy. hello. Uh, people look at these girls and are like, dude, like, Man, well, they look at him as having only seen them in the bedroom. Mm -hmm. I've seen what she, what, what talent she has in the bedroom, and something I've always aimed to do, whether it's on the night shift or here, or wherever, is to show that these girls are just dope as fuck. Like these are just real cool ass chicks. They, they're so they're, nice. They're yeah, so yeah, yeah. nice. Yeah. If any fan or anybody ever walked up to these girls in real life, they they're all chill. They're all down to like and like a like the best way possible. They're, they're like dudes, like bros. Yes, they're, they're like the yes, homies. Yes, you know, they're looking yes. out for your best interests. They're like you know, they're just they're tight to just chill with and just talk about whatever. And they're all givers, bro. Like Absolutely. in the nicest way. They're and very the generous. Generous <laughs> is a good way to put it. Absolutely, <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Have I, you met a, a lot? A lot of them. Have you hung out with like Riley and and yes. all the all yeah, the yeah yeah yeah. I've hung out with a lot of them. A lot yeah. of them are cool. Um, I've had way too many. I can't yeah. even keep them straight. Yeah. Um, you gamble. Do I gamble a little bit? Yeah. I'm more of I like with stocks and shit. I'm more into that. But yeah, I'll gamble a little bit. Oh, some here. real business shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm better. With, I'm better with stocks, but I'll, I'll gamble a little bit. You stocks know, and bonds. CeeLo. CeeLo or stocks. It's kind of the, the go-to. I lost 15k before uh, before I came here. Could be worse. Um. Yeah, it could be much worse. It just I just hate losing. You know, and it, I lose so often <laughs> that you'd think I'd be used to it at this point but you win sometimes dude. you win a lot bro yeah, come on yeah you do Just common you logan do paul lose L, man. a lot bro you, common do. Logan. you look no, you look unhappy bro i'm sorry uh no no i'm not just unhappy just merely disappointed in myself <laughs> Uh, but I'm, I'm gonna win it back i'm gonna win it back black or red next and by the way i'm gonna do what you say i'm gonna put 10k on the on black or red black nah, i think that's 100 percent. Yeah, i'll do black. it i'll, I'll yeah. let you know what, what happens because we're down bad right now all right to close on a good note <laughs> That chain is fire. 
Uh, shout out to Alligator Jesus. He <laughs> he gave this to me. <laughs> okay. He gave this to me right before my show at Sapphire. Oh yeah. Does he yeah, know Cuban. that he gave it to you? Yeah. No, he does. I didn't know him about it. I was like, hey, bro, like, you want this back? He said, yeah, we'll see. Yeah, we'll Real see. One. Like a threat. He, he, really? He's a guy who does. He's a guy who does uh, grills and shit. Yo. Yeah. Pete. Uh, unnecessary balling. You, 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 you just inspired me, Pete. At unnecessary balling on Instagram. Uh, you gave me, you gave me a Rolex to wear like maybe three months ago. I, you never asked for it back. Yeah, oh, that's kind of what we're. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, if you see this, I have it for you, and it's yours. Should have never said that. No, it's Pete, bro. I love Pete, dude. Shout out Pete. I'm shout out nine 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 Juice World. Shout out to, yeah, Damn. Shout out to the game, man. Damn. Shit. Can I ask you one last thing before we <laughs> yeah, sign off? Absolutely. What's your name? <laughs> Young. Guess. Young. Guess. Young. Young. Guess, bro. I feel like it's Thomas or some shit. <laughs> Can I go on? Yeah. Christopher. You already you know my name though. No, <laughs> we were lit that fucking night. I don't know, maybe, maybe. I don't know if we, we would have said my real name. Uh, Daniel, Max. I got a basic ass. They all getting close. Oh yeah, that's right. That's Matt. right. It's it's uh, Matthew. Matthew. Matt Matt Young Gravy. That's right, bro. Matthew Matthew Raymond Howry. Young yeah, Matthew baby. Raymond Howry. Howry. Yeah, yeah. Matt, Matt Raymond has a cool over here. Yeah, dude. man. Oh, my first son is for sure gonna be a Raymond. That's, that's cool. It's, it's been in the family for years, man. Yeah. Your last name's really Paul. Two first names. My three, middle name is Lauren. Lauren? Yeah, 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 that's why I really needed friends. Like, like L-O-R-E-N? Nah, the f real female way. Uh, like, that's why I really need friends all the time. That's why. That's yeah, what I man. wanted to talk about before the show. You, can't, came, you came up, man. Sometimes if you take an L like that, you come up, man. <laughs> you know? Uh, I, do. I appreciate you coming on the show, man, for real. <laughs> Absolutely, man. This was, this was tight. We got to all get back together soon, man. Do some shit. Well, I'm going to be with you tonight. That's tonight. Shit. Tonight. Are you leaving? Are you going? Tomorrow. Tomorrow. You're going back to Puerto Rico or what? Yeah, Puerto Rico. Going into training. Going going to be just getting in shape again. Hopefully just fixing my knee. Icy ass shit. Just going yeah. to Puerto Rico to train to fight people. It's ways. fun, bro. You know, it's a good time down there. Um, I got to pull up. You going on tour anytime soon? What do we want I'm to do? Oh, what am I doing? It's coming up. Uh, I mean, I got an Australia tour soon and I got a bunch of festivals. When? and. Uh, Yo, why does everybody? Kaylani's keeps, going to Australia too. Why does everybody uh, just keep saying this? Oh, I was, yeah, I was just talking to her about it. Um, I'm going February like 9th until like the beginning of March. <laughs> I, might, I might be there, bro. I, I, yeah. I, think, I think we're gonna show up. Yeah, yeah. Bro, yeah what? We'll pull up, pull up and let's there. get let's, let's get after it. All, the whole thing sold out in like three days. No fucking. They way. They love me in Australia. It's gonna be sick, dude. Let's go. Sick. Yeah, we'll be there the 9th to the 19th. Really? Yeah. In Australia, what city? We'll go. We'll do Perth, Melbourne, and Sydney. I'm sure we'll cross over, bro. Let's make it happen. Fuck yes. But also, not... like, they can't be that far from each other, right? They are. They no, are. they are. They, they are. are. Perth is, that is country's crazy. That country that big. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's those three cities, and then it's just like like kangaroos and forests and spiders and there's shit. Like two yeah. other, there's like two other cities. I think there's like like periods of like 400 miles that have like no gas stations or anything. There's like parts where you, like, you literally can't drive because you're Is that like the outback? Yeah, like way out can, there. Can I have a personal ask real quick? If you're watching this, uh, can you send me burger places to my Instagram for Australia? Because I know they have crazy burger places down Just there. Just, yeah, any recommendations? Yeah. Let's figure out. Let's not forget. There's all the people listening. Uh, whatever dates we cross over, let's do something. In, you going to be there too? Yeah. Okay. In Australia? Yeah. We absolutely should. Let's link up. We absolutely we'll should. We'll find the dates we cross over. Prime talk. We'll be launching, we'll be launching Prime. At one of the biggest retailers there. Me and KSI are gonna do a big fucking meetup, dude. So we're gonna, right, we're, gonna be, we're gonna be active. Sick. We're gonna be active. I don't know if that's a spoiler alert, but Sydney, we're coming. Or Perth, <laughs> Melbourne. I don't know. We'll be in Australia. Listen, thank you guys for listening to this episode of Impulsive. We appreciate you. We will see you next time. Hit that subscribe button if you're not subscribed. Young Grady, ladies and gentlemen, let's fucking go. Thank Take it you, easy, y'all. Peace.